Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Uh, come on in. Uh, come on in. Come on in. This is um, Prophet Wes uh, coming to you. I'm going to say a brief word of prayer for those who are in need. And we all in need. The Bible tells us that man should always pray and not faint. And so I want to pray uh, for, the, for those who feel like fainting. I want to pray for those who feel like giving up. I want to pray for those who feel like walking away. You feel like um, life itself has been so hard on you. And I do want to say a word of prayer. Uh, I want to let you know also in what God is doing in this season. One of the things that I've noticed, there's a shift that's taking place uh, in this season. There's a shift. It's almost like the dream that I had uh, some years ago when um, I saw this, I saw this bubble going up in the air uh, and it was full of helium air. And as this bubble went up in the air and the bubble got so high to a point and then once the bubble got to its highest, there came a pin, which was God and burst the bubble and the bubble began to fall down. And as this particular balloon or bubble began to fall back to the ground, which was the prideful, uh, God's remnant and God's chosen people begin to um, ascend. And what's happening, the shift is taking place where God is removing and he's exposing the fake and the phony, but he's elevating the real and the raw, the raw. That means that people who have been drugged through the mud, people who've been through so type some so many types of sicknesses, been so many types of warfare, people been paralyzed, people been rejected, people been it feels like they've been forgot about, people been drugged through the mud, uh vessels, forged vessels of recovery. God is raising up a remnant of people who have been raised and they, they're coming up with a voice and they're raw. They are raw and gifted, but they love God. And the thing about it, the fact that they're raw, that they've been through something and they had an encounter with God. And so from that rawness and from that encounter with God, uh, God is raising up real people who are going to talk to real people, who are going to relate to real people. God is raising up. God is raising up people who have been paralyzed, uh, 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 quadriplegic, people who've been paralyzed from uh, from cancer, people who have been hurt, people who have been rejected and all those things. God is healing these people. God is healing these people, giving them an encounter, giving them power, giving them a testimony. And from that encounter, God is bringing them and taking them and going to be a witness into the streets. God is taking these people, uh, these vessels into the hills and the highways, into the hospitals. And God is going to uh, cause them to be an example of righteousness. And this example of righteousness is going to reveal God's power. And where there's doubt, and where there's fear, God's going to cause fear to become evicted and healing is going to take place. Hear me and hear me well. See, for many years, there are so many televangelists who've performed miracles on television, but they were staged. They were fake. See, but we're living in a day and time where God is going to cause great exploits to be wrought. God's going to cause his power to be wrought. It's going to be revealed. He's going to reveal his power to the believer. The Bible says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. That means that if you have a need, if you have the faith, see, because when you grab faith and see, because God gives each man, each woman, the measure of faith, whatever your level of faith, but when you grab faith, because all you need is a, a grain, the size of a mustard seed, and you can tell a mountain. And now what is a mountain? A mountain is something in your life that's big. A mountain is something in your life that it seems like it's insurmountable. A mountain is something in your life that it seems like it won't fall. Just like, if I'm using the Bible, uh, the walls of Jericho. See, the walls of Jericho, the Jericho was a fence city. They were big, they were large, and they ran things. And so God had instructed the children of Israel to go to the walls of Jericho, and we're going to cause that wall to go come down. And so God gave the man of God, Joshua, instructed to go to the wall. And all they did was shout. And at the praise, at their praise and at their voice, they were given instructions. They walked around once, one time a day. But on the seventh day, they walked around seven times. But in the end, they opened up their mouth. 
and they began to shout because God had already given him the victory, given them the victory. And as they began to shout the walls, they fell down. That big thing, that thing that no one thought that could be defeated. No one thought that can be removed. See, many of you, you're facing something that uh, history or uh, numbers or reports says it may be an impossible situation. The report says that you ain't going to do it. The report says that you're going to fail. The report says that you're not going to make it. The report says you're going to die in your condition. Your condition of par uh, paralysis. Your condition of fear and hope and hurt. Your, your condition of doubt and disbelief. And see, the, the, the stack... The stack, the deck is stacked up against you where it appears as though uh, you are going to fail and it appears as though the system is right and you are wrong. And let me bring this. This is a familiar example. See, but there's a difference. That might be a fact. It might be a fact that you might be paralyzed. It might be a fact that your heart might have got broken. It might be a fact uh, that that person, that man, that boy, that girl cheated on you. It might be a fact that uh, you just lost everything. It might be a fact that you just got a report from the doctor that said that you're sick and that you are going to die in a certain amount of days. It might be a fact that your kids might have ran away. It might be a fact that you all alone and, and, the, and, the, and all kind of stops are going through your mind. See, but the thing about it, there's a thing called the truth. And the Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free and see what you need to do, know and what you need to do at this particular place. Know the truth, know Jesus and know who he is by having faith in him. See, the Bible said you must just first believe that he is and a reward to them that diligent seek him. And so the question is, are you seeking him? Because if you seek him, he will be found. The Bible said, ask and it shall be given, and it shall be done, not, and it shall be opened. And so God wants you to open up your mouth and begin to praise him. Praise him for the victory already. And so now naturally so, see, you might see the situation might be the same. See, but spiritually so is not. See, because God speaks to your potential. That's why the Bible said, by his stripes you are healed. And I'm speaking to your potential. And your potential is your healing. You might be in a situation, but I'm speaking to your end result. See, because the Bible says God is not slack concerning his promises. And so if you can believe it, you can receive it. And I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about the spirit of Absalom. I was going to talk about the spirit of Absalom before I pray. Before I pray. I'm going to pray against the spirit of Absalom. And the spirit of Absalom, one of the things that I noticed, the spirit of Absalom, it's a, it's a, it's a, as an example, uh, as an example, you know, when you were a kid, when you were a kid, when uh, you were friends with this person, or you filmed this person and you fell out. And so you fell out and you know, you fell out with that person, but that person couldn't take it. And so that person, what that person did, that person began to talk about you. That person began to uh, assassinate your name or talk about you concerning their perception of who you are to get you to believe in their story. <clears throat> and what happens is that that friend as an adolescent, that friend, <clears throat> his purpose was to, if you, I'm not friends with you, I don't want no matter to be friends with you. And see, this is the Absalom spirit that I'm talking about. See, Absalom in the Bible, he was the son of David. And see, he had a brother and a sister. What happened was, there's something tragic that happened. Now, Absalom, instead of going to his brother, which is Ammon, Ammon, which was his older brother, instead of going to him and talking to him about the situation, instead he buried in his heart and he decided to talk to his uh, soldiers. And his purpose was, instead of talking to his brother, kill him. Even when it came to David and David found out, the king, the father found out what happened in that situation. David was upset. He expressed his um, displeasure. But Absalom said nothing. Said nothing at all. And see, the Bible says, the Bible says to be uh, 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 be not deceived. God is not marked. What's a man soweth, that will he also reap. Also, you need to realize is that the Bible said the devil comes as an angel of light, but inwardly he's a devouring wolf. Wolf. See, we are living in a day and time where, uh, in the last days, the Bible said uh, the adversary God's going to send a strong delusion that those that say they believe that they might 
uh, be damned because they rejected the truth. And so what's happened in this season, there are many false apostles. There are many false miracles. There are people and their heart is geared toward them instead of God. It's, it's, it's geared to what, what they have instead of God. It's geared to what, what they're saying instead of what God has said. And so what happened is that there are so many people, and unfortunately, there are so many people that are even, that represent or say that they represent Jesus. They have this spirit. It's a spirit of jealousy. It's a spirit of envy. It's a, it's a spirit of pride. It's a spirit of gossip. It's a spirit of backbiting. And see, none of these things that they possess, they can inherit the kingdom of God. See, because the, the, the Bible says is, the Bible says that all, all unrighteousness is sin. And sin, God cannot recognize or see or face sin. He has to see the blood. And so many, the Bible said in the last day, many going to say, Lord, Lord, have I prophesied in your name? Have I cast out devils in your name? Have I did this in your name? And God's going to say to these people, uh, I never knew you. You work of iniquity. And what God meant by that, I never knew you. In other words, God said, I was never intimate with you. So in other words, in other words, God never knew him. And see, they were, uh, see, also in, this, in this, this season, this hour, God is raising up people who have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And so in other words, they're more geared toward image. They're more geared toward present, presentation than power, than deliverance. They're more geared toward how many people they got in the church, how much money they give, how many people backing them, how much people agree with them, instead of how many people agreeing with the word. See, 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 God is removing that type of person, see, because God is exposing. See, we are living in a season that where the spirit of God is becoming stronger and he's exposing the hearts of men. And whatever's in your heart is going to be exposed, especially if you represent who God is. Believe the report. Amen. Amen. Amen, Crystal. Uh, amen, Christina. And you're going to overcome it all. And I speak and I declare right now, you are going to walk again. You already healed. Jesus said, by his stripes, you're healed. When he took those licks, those licks were for you, Christina. They were for me. They were for Daniel. They were for, for humanity. They were for everyone who believed that they can be healed. But all they had to do was trust in God and believe. The, see, the Bible said there's life and death in your mouth. See, we must be careful of what comes out of our mouth. We can't identify what we see, but we identify what God has said. See, the adversary will trick us every time because we get caught up into, we get caught up into uh, what we see. We get caught up in the world system instead of believing what God has said. And see, anytime you get caught up into the world system, you will miss out your blessing. Don't miss out on your blessing trusting in a man. See, a man ain't God. God created man. God created medicine. Matter of fact, the Bible said the trees or the leaves were for the healing of the nation. Herbs were for the healing of the nation. See, God has orchestrated and God had put everything here for us to live abundantly. The, the Bible said the thief comes by the kill, steal and destroy. But God said that I come that you have life and life more abundantly. And see, what's happened to me Especially with my son, Daniel, I'm ready to pray is that God has really changed me. He's changed my heart. He's changed my direction and he's changed my conversation. He changed my conversation from, from talking, talking to just about church people and cute church messages and, and scriptural messages. And he's taught me how to talk life, talk to people. True ministry is to meet people where they are. People are hurting. Why am I talking about? Why am I talking about the pie in the sky when people are down here on earth are hurting? You talk where they're hurting. Tell them that they can make it. Tell them that you believe in them. See, there are so many people, brother preacher and and, and sister preacher, that are, are out in the streets, not in the church, that are hurting, and they're waiting on someone to believe in them. They're waiting on someone to say you can make it. They're waiting on someone to say call me. That's what God is calling for. And so there are many people uh, that are in the household of faith. You out of order because you're talking a good message, but you ain't in the streets. You're talking a good message, but you ain't in the highways in the Bible. You ain't in the hospital. The Bible says if you say you're religious, you have religion. The Bible says you need to visit the hospitals. Uh, go to the sick. Go to the homeless. If you're not doing that, your religion is in vain. True religion is going to the hospitals. It's giving to the sick. It's doing
doing the work of an evangelist. It's going into the house. See, the problem is, see, the church people, they, you see, church folk, they're talking about coming to the church. That's good. That's good. They need to come to church. See, but who's going to go get them? The Bible said the harvest are plenty, but the laborers are few. The problem, many people in the church, they're lazy. Nobody want to witness. Once they got God, I got mine. You get yours the best way. And folk are dying, folk are sick. And you think that you think that you're anointed? You think that you think that God is blessing you? Money is not blessing. No, you, because you got money, that's not the blessing. Healing, health, peace of mind, joy, family, that's that's a blessing. That's the blessing. That's prosperity. Not money in your pocket. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. That's the prosperity, knowing God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, we magnify you. We praise you. <coughs> Help us. Forgive us. Forgive us, God. Forgive us of our self-righteous attitude. God, forgive us of our self-righteous self -righteous mindset. God, forgive us of our conversation. Give, forgive us of our mouth. God, we need to kill our mouth. We need to learn how to uh, control our mouth. We need to learn how to be swift to hear and slow to speak. We need to learn how to show love. We need to learn how to be a witness of righteousness, be a witness of love, be a witness of honesty, be a witness of truth, be a witness of you, God. God teaches God, create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. God, for those that are listening to me and they're here, even my sister Christina, she was paralyzed from the neck down. But you said in your word she's healed. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what doctors say. It doesn't matter what stats, stats say. But it's what you say. And God, you're moving in a, in a season, in an hour where true deliverance is taking place. And you're raising up people who are raw. You're raising up people who are real. You're raising up people who are hungry. Who are hungry for change. Who are hungry for your word. Because you said in your word, they that hunger and thirst after you, they shall be filled. God filled their mouth up. God filled their mouth up with power. God filled their mouth up with strength. God filled their mouth up with confidence. God filled their mouth up with healing because healing is the children's bread. God teaches how. God teaches how uh, to uplift each other, God. God teaches how. God to magnify your name, even in situations, bad situations, God. God, you said to turn to you. God, you said to come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and you will give us rest. God, we need rest. God, for those that are weary, God, give them rest, God. God, touch their heart, God, and let them know to turn to you. God, there are so many people that are listening to me that will listen to me. They're turned to so many things. Uh, they're, they're uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable in their life. And they're turning to so many th things. The woman, she's turning to a man. She turned to love. She think she'll find comfort in that, but she realizes and understands it's not in that. That man, he think that the money, that 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 money that he get, that money that he make, he can find peace in that, but it's not in that. That person, that person, that mother that think that they can lay on their kids and, and spend time with their kids all the time, and they think that the peace and confidence in that is not in that. But true confidence and true peace is in you, God. God, let them know that that longing that they feel is you calling them in. That longing that they feel is, is, is you saying, come to me. That longing, God, that they feel, God, is you saying, God, they said, I love you. God, that longing that they feel in their spirit, God, is saying, come to me. For you said, whosoever shall call on your name, they shall be saved. This is the purpose, God. The purpose, God, you said, to come and to save and to seek that which is lost, God. You said, God, you gave an example of uh, as a good shepherd, God, 99 was saved, but you went to get that lost sheep, that one. God, we want that one. God, we speak life to that one. God, that one right now, God, that one right now, God, that one that right now, that they're in a place where they're making a decision. God, I can see God does a, does a needle. They're going to put a needle in their arm, God. God, speak to their heart and tell them no. They put, got put those pills. That lady, that girl, uh, she's about to put all those pills in her mouth because she feel like uh, the cross was a lot. She feel like her life is over. She feel like she can't trust nobody no more. She's been hurt so much by people that she trusted. She feel like she can't trust no more. But God, I speak to her right now. I rest her. Speak to her mind. Because it's your power, God, that, that cast down every imagination and thought and everything that would try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity to the obedience of Christ. God, speak to her mind. I speak, we speak as a, as a voice. We speak as a people. Speak to her mind and tell her no. To that mother, homeless, on the side with her kids, begging for help. 
going to people for money and asking, oh, can you help me? My, my child, are we homeless? God, make provisions for her. Make provisions for her. God, I thank you, God, for your love and your power. God, I thank you for the encounter that you've allowed me to see, the encounter that you've allowed me to come into. I ain't gonna lie, God, I hate the pain. I hate what has happened to my son and what's went on, but I thank you for the closest. I thank you for opening my eyes up. I thank you for knowing what true deliverance is. God, my heart hurts so much for those that are hurt, for those that are sick, for those that are bereaved, for those that are paralyzed, and for those that are bound and trapped. My heart goes out. And God, I speak healing to everyone that hear, that it get into their ears, and that they revive again. God, I speak, God, and this is a season of restoration. God, restore, restore, bring back the life. Renew, revive, resuscitate. Resuscitate in Jesus' name. Because you said you're going to do a new thing in the land. God, do a new thing. And every, every dry place, God, you're going to cause a, a river to spring up. God, every one that's walking through a dry situation, a dry uh, mindset, a dry surrounding, a dry a way of thinking, a dry way of feeling, a dry way of uh, thinking and seeing, God, bring them water. God, encourage them. Encourage their heart. God teaches how to be real and God teaches how to be righteous. And righteous is not uh, dotting every I and crossing every T, but righteousness is trusting in you. Righteousness is when you see your brother or sister in the fault, him that is spiritual, consider yourself, go to that person in a spirit of meekness. Teach us how to have that meek spirit, that meekness that Jesus had, that meek spirit that Moses had. Look, let us walk in meekness. Let us walk in love because that's what's going to break the bands of bondage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We are living in a season where God is raising up real folk and God is causing real miracles to take place. In this season, in this hour, God is, God is causing and God is working and God is revealing and he's seeing through men and women alike, notable miracles are taking place. That means things that God has done where, where it's been documented that it was a certain way, but also it's been documented that it changed overnight. See, God is going to cause things to happen in your life suddenly. So those that listen to me, expect your suddenly. Expect your breakthrough. Expect your healing. Expect it, expect it, expect it. And as you expect it, lock right now. Don't let your mind wander to the left. Don't let your mind wander to the right. To the right. And when you get around people that are saying stuff contrary to your focus, contrary to your vision, Contrary to what is in your heart, block them out and keep, keep, keep moving. Keep doing what God has called you to do in the season of time, in this hour, and you will receive your healing, your breakthrough, your deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please listen and share.